Hi, I'm Amelia. Recently I had to sing in a rock band and also found out that I had a sister. But let me tell you everything from the beginning. Angie asked me out that day. He promised to surprise me and didn't tell me where we were going. I didn't really like Angie, but I was so tired because of college that I agreed to go relax. As a result, we found ourselves in a small concert hall among a crowd of people. I felt really out of place next to them. I was surrounded by guys with aggressive makeup, piercings, and a lot of tattoos. When the performers ran onto the stage, the music was so loud that my ears hurt. I wasn't a rock fan and I didn't want to be there. But Angie was clearly over the moon and didn't even notice me turning around to leave. It wasn't easy to squeeze through the crowd. I was constantly being pushed, so I almost fell as I was wearing high heels. It was infuriating. After I'd finally managed to make my way to the exit, someone suddenly grabbed me by the arm. I turned around and bumped into a guy I didn't recognize. What do you want? The guy kept staring at me. Meg? I was confused. Why did he call me that? Before I knew it, that lunatic started dragging me somewhere. I tried to resist and call for help, but no one could hear me because of the loud music. We walked through several hallways and then he pushed me into some kind of dressing room. I was angry, scared, and didn't know what to expect from that nutcase. The worst thoughts came to my mind. I was trying to figure out how to slip past him and run back out into the hallway. Meg, where have you been? Our performance is in an hour. And why are you wearing something so awful? I got so angry after hearing him say that about my outfit that I ignored everything else. Actually, this is a great dress from the latest collection. You, on the other hand, should definitely work on your sense of style. The guy's face suddenly changed and he looked at me like he was seeing me for the first time. He narrowed his eyes and looked me up and down. You are not Meg. Obviously, my name is Amelia. Nice to meet you, but I'm leaving. Suddenly, I noticed a poster of a rock band on the wall and froze. There was a girl on it who looked a lot like me. I thought I was just imagining it and came closer. It seemed impossible, but I was on the poster. The band's vocalist and I were like two drops of water. Only our hairstyles and clothes were different. And she also wore the exact same pendant on her neck as me. I had been wearing that pendant since I had been a kid and didn't even remember where I had got it from. The guy's name was Steve. He told me that Meg hadn't been answering her phone for several hours. And if their band didn't perform that day, they would be breach of contract and they would have to pay a huge amount of money. When Steve asked me to pretend to be Meg, I thought he was completely insane. But Steve and I just have to change my clothes and open my mouth to the track. I didn't want to agree to that at all. I would have definitely refused it if it hadn't been for the poster. I wanted to find out why Meg and I looked so similar and why we had the same pendants. Such coincidences simply did not happen. Steve was delighted and put boxes of concert costumes in front of me. When I saw what I would have to wear, I almost burst into tears. To my shame, torn black pants, a top with a bunch of rivets and a bandana, absolutely not my style. I had to hide my hair, which I was very proud of, under a wig. And Steve even drew tattoos on my skin. I spent the remaining time before the performance learning the lyrics of the song. Before going on stage, I was literally shaking. It felt like it would be a complete failure, but everything went fine. I didn't forget the words and no one noticed that I wasn't the real Meg. After the performance, Steve asked me if I would be willing to replace Meg again if she didn't show up. They planned to participate in a prestigious competition a week after that. Their application had been chosen among many others, and it would have been a shame for the musicians to miss such a chance. I agreed, and in exchange, I asked Steve to tell me about Meg. That's how I found out that Meg had put together the band and wrote songs for it. She was a real rebel, loved to ride a bike, and was always getting into trouble. I wanted to talk to her parents, but Steve didn't know their address. Meg had long since moved out and lived either in a hostel or in rented apartments. I spent the next few days meeting Steve after college. He taught me how to move and act on stage. Our rehearsals took place in a concert hall, and one day, we were seen by a vocalist from another band who was also participating in the competition. Cheryl saw I was lip syncing and started mocking me. She laughed and said I, or to be more precise, Meg, had no talent. It was very unpleasant. Steve stood up for me and Cheryl left, but I didn't like her nasty smirk at all. And on the way home, I noticed a man following me. It could have been a random passerby, but he followed me all the way from the concert hall. I ran into my house with my heart pounding and quickly locked the door behind me. The next day I saw him again while walking home from college. So after the rehearsal, I asked Steve to walk me home. By the way, Steve suddenly changed. He used to act friendly, but now he was trying to flirt with me. He complimented me, joked, and even gave me flowers. I like Steve, so I didn't mind. One day we came to a cafe. The waiter didn't come up to us for a long time and Steve went to find out what was wrong. He left his phone on the table and got a message. I wasn't going to read it, but then I suddenly saw my name. 
After making sure Steve wasn't looking in my direction, I picked up the phone and read, Amelia has to sign the documents by tomorrow. Come back in an hour, I'll give you the papers. The sender's number was not saved in its contact list. It all seemed very suspicious to me. When Steve came back and read the message, I noticed that he was nervous. The waiter finally took our order, but I didn't feel like eating anymore. I barely got through the next half hour picking at a chocolate cake. Then Steve apologized and said he needed to leave at once. I hope you don't mind that I won't be able to walk you home. I pretended that everything was fine and decided to follow him and find out who had sent that weird message. Following Steve and trying to go unnoticed, I, I felt glad for the first time that I wasn't wearing heels. Steve was walking fast and several times I almost lost sight of him. Soon we found ourselves in an area with rows of luxury mansions. Steve walked up to one of them, rang the bell and walked in. Well, what was I supposed to do now? I hung around at the gate for a while and was already beginning to think that I had come there for nothing, when I suddenly noticed something interesting in the grass. Bending down, I picked up a familiar pendant from the ground. It looked just like the one I was wearing. It couldn't be a coincidence. The pendant I found definitely belonged to Meg, but where was she? I decided to look around again and found a black bike not far from the house. I immediately remembered Steve saying that Meg often rode a bike. First the pendant, now the bike. What was going on? I didn't trust Steve anymore, so I decided to sneak into the house and find out everything for myself. I walked around the mansion and somehow got over the fence but tore my jeans in the process. Before that would have upset me, but now? I didn't care about something so insignificant at all. I pulled myself up, looked through a window, and saw an empty kitchen. When I got inside, I couldn't believe that I was really doing it. I would have never dared to do something like that before. But my desire to find out everything turned out to be stronger than fear. Creeping cautiously to the door, I looked out into the corridor. At that very moment, I heard muffled screams coming from somewhere below. The voice was female. It seemed like someone was calling for help. The adrenaline kicked in, and I felt like a heroine in a movie. It wasn't hard to find the stairs leading to the basement. I went there and saw the door locked with a latch. The voice was coming from behind it. Meg, is that you? After a short pause, they answered. Yes, and who are you? It doesn't matter, help me get out of here. When the door opened and I saw Meg, I thought I was looking in a mirror. We looked so much alike. Meg seemed to be thinking the same thing, or maybe she was just shocked. Meg even pinched herself to make sure she wasn't imagining things. But how? Okay, we'll figure it out later. We need to get out of here. We went upstairs and almost got to the exit, when we suddenly ran into Steve. He was holding some papers in his hand. When Steve saw us, he literally froze. Then we heard footsteps behind us, turned around and saw a familiar man. It was the guy who had been following me for the past few days. Meg got her bearings quickly. She pushed Steve away, grabbed my hand, and we ran out into the street. I'd never run so fast in my life. My heart was pounding like crazy, and a thousand thoughts were running through my mind. I once again felt glad that I had put on sneakers in the morning. It seemed like someone was chasing us, but I didn't dare look back and check. Meg deftly jumped on the bike. I sat behind her and hugged her. We immediately took off. Meg brought us to a police station. Her dad was a policeman, and when she told him about everything, he helped her file a kidnapping report. Then, Meg and I sat in the waiting room and talked. We had so much to discuss. I recently came to my parents to pick up some documents. I was rummaging through the papers and accidentally found a certificate of adoption. I was wondering who my real mom and dad were. I did a little research and found out where they used to live. Around the same time, a strange guy came up to me, Mr. Jones. He introduced himself as a producer and suggested I sign a lucrative contract, but did not even let me read it properly. Of course, I didn't sign anything, and he left. But the next day, when I went to the address where my real parents lived, I ran into that Mr. Jones there. Before I even knew it, he grabbed me and locked me in the basement. That's insane! Have you been sitting in the basement this whole time? Well, at least he brought me food, although of course being locked up for so long sucks. I gave Meg the pendant I had found, and she was very surprised that I had one just like it. There could be only one explanation for our identical pendants and looks. We were sisters, but it still wasn't clear what the deal with our parents was and what Mr. Jones had to do with it. When I got home, I asked my parents why they hadn't told me I was adopted. Dad immediately turned sad and Mom actually started crying. We didn't want you to know, Amelia. We raised you as our own and you really became our daughter. I hugged them. I love you too, but I need to know something about the past. Do you know what happened to my real parents? How did I end up in an orphanage? But they didn't know anything. The next day, Meg's dad said that Mr. Jones had been detained and asked us to come to the police station again. 
When we walked into his office, Steve was sitting there. Amelia, I'm sorry. After we met, Mr. Jones found me. He promised to give me a lot of money if I got you to sign some documents. I've been dreaming of a solo career for a long time and money could help with promotion, so I agreed. I was shocked by such a betrayal, so that's why he had been spending so much time with me, and I thought he really liked me. Steve gave the police the documents he was supposed to get me to sign. Thanks to that, the police found out the details of the weird story. Mr. Jones was in business with your parents. After their death, you got all the money, but he decided to take it for himself. First he took custody of you, and then he left you in an orphanage. However, when Meg started looking for her biological parents, he got scared you would find out about everything. He tried to trick you into giving up your inheritance. It took me a long time to digest everything I learned. I couldn't believe I had a twin sister, but there was another important event ahead of us. The rock band's competition. I went to all of Meg's rehearsals and we hung out all the time now. Steve returned to the band, which upset me. I hadn't forgiven him and I didn't want to see him. On the day of the competition, Meg and the band went on stage. I watched their performance from the wings and was terribly worried. But Meg did amazing. Her voice sounded even better live than if she was lip syncing. I had never been so proud of someone. Everything was going well, but then something happened in the middle of the performance. The music suddenly stopped and only Meg's voice sounded in the hall. The musicians looked at each other bewildered, but Meg did not hesitate and kept singing. Looking around, I noticed Cheryl, who had made her way to the console and changed the settings. She thought Meg was lip syncing and would embarrass herself, but the complete opposite happened. The audience loved Meg's solo and gave her a standing ovation. You should have seen Cheryl's face at that moment. No wonder Meg's band won. I was incredibly happy for her. After the victory, we came to a cafe and celebrated the victory until late in the evening. Mr. Jones had squandered almost all of our inheritance. The mansion was mortgaged, our bank accounts were almost empty, but the remaining money was enough for us. Meg spent hers on the development of the band, and now they are performing solo concerts all over the country. She moved to a cool apartment, and I stayed with my parents, who I still consider my family. Steve still messages me and says that he really liked me. Do you think I should give him another chance? This is the SCP Foundation, a secret organization that finds and studies anomalous objects all over the planet. These are the Foundation's secret files. You may already be familiar with them. And these are the stories of ordinary people who got lucky to encounter the most horrifying creatures in the world. The SCP Chronicles reveal new details about the anomalous objects you didn't know before.